I was watching a video last night about the causes of terrorism, and um, I will post the link to that video in the About section of this YouTube video. But um, the uh, person uh, giving the talk said um, that seeking affiliation, uh, he believed, was one of the real causes of um, terrorism, why people become terrorists. And I also think, because I've been a gang stalking target for eight years, that um, this idea of seeking affiliation is also uh, one of the reasons why people gang stalk. Like, why do average people in America gang stalk? Um, and there was a chapter in my book, The Search for Being, which I haven't posted as a video on YouTube because I thought, ah, it's too psychoanalytic and people, you know, it's not something that people would really relate to. But I think that this idea of um, separateness and union is one of the real foundational ideas in human behavior. I really think it's the foundational um, idea in psychoanalysis, for instance. So I decided to post um, this chapter from my book, The Search from Being. Um, it's called Hans Lowell's Perspective. And I'm uh, guessing how to pronounce his name because I've only seen it in print. I've never heard it pronounced. The spelling of it is L-O-E-W-A-L-D. And he was a psychoanal psychoanalyst. Uh, the title of this chapter in my book is called The Core of Being. The core of our being needs to be articulated and integrated in order to emerge. And for that to happen, said psychoanalyst Hans Lowell, you need the right kind of environment. The right environment for our development, said Lowell, is one that represents a higher stage of organization than the stage of organization of our mind. The right environment, Lowell goes on, consists of parents who are empathic, who understand the level of development of their child, yet who can also anticipate what the next level their child has the potential to achieve is, and who interact with their child in such a way that the child identifies with their parents' vision of who they can be. Our relationships with others, Lowell said, play a vital role in the formation of our minds. We grow by identifying with our parents by internalizing aspects of our parents' personality including <clears throat> their image of us, which they communicate to us in the myriad ways they interact with us. It's through our interaction with others, Lowell said, that our psychic structure evolves. Our id, ego, and superego arise, Lowell said, through our interaction with our environment, which we internalize. In this way, Lowell said, what was external becomes internal. The process begins at the very start of our lives. We begin life, Lowell said, with minds that possess little organization. In the beginning, he said, we experience no outside or inside, no sense of time, of past, of present, of future. Self and other are not perceived as separate or separable. In the first weeks of life, there is no difference between I and not I, said Lowell. The infant exists in what Lowell calls primary narcissistic identity with the mother. He dwells in an undifferentiated feeling of oneness, a part of an infant mother psychic unity. Psychoanalyst Stephen Mitchell gives us an example of how mother and child make up a singular undifferentiated experience. He tells about the case of a new mother who found herself holding her baby with arms outstretched, literally at arm's length, even though she could hold her baby in the customary ways, Mitchell tells us, she preferred to hold the baby with arms outstretched. The mother later learned that when she was a baby, her mother had been in a car accident and broken both her arms. Because her mother's arms were in cast, she held her for several months after she was born with arms outstretched. Mitchell cites research to illustrate the point, we mother as we, has, as we have been mothered. What was external becomes internal. We do to others what was done to us. Mitchell supporting Low, supports Lowell's contention of a unified mother-infant psychological field, 
hypothesizes that early experiences are stored as kinesthetic memories in which self and other are undifferentiated. He concludes, it seems likely to me that what is recorded and stored is a global sense of mothering in which the mother and infant are merged into a singular event that envelops both of them. The infant begins to differentiate himself from others in his environment, Lowell said, by about his second month. Through perceiving that some stimulation is always available, while other stimulation is not, he begins to become aware of inside and outside, himself and other. Slowly, through his mother's ministrations, this bundle of incoherent urges, thrashings, and reflex activities, said Lowell, through his mother's recognizing his needs and fulfilling them, <clears throat> giving his experiences meaning, becomes more organized. His mother organizes her baby's vital process, Lowell said, in such a way as to give rise to his instinctual life. Thus, the infant organizes stimuli through internalization. The concept of internalization is very important, said Lowell, in understanding how our minds evolve. Lowell makes the distinction between identification and internalization. We can identify with aspects of another's personality, or we can have a more primitive, total identification with someone's significant to us in our environment. Identification plays a crucial part in the formation of our personality. It erases differences between people. When we identify with a person or an aspect of a person, said Lowell, whereas in internalization, Lowell said, our identity with the other is renounced. It frees us from the other. In internalization, Lowell said, our identity with the other is given up. What we internalize is the function the other provides for us, the image the other has of us. What we internalize, Lowell said, becomes an integral part of the self. If the environmental circumstances we grew up in was favorable, Lowell said, or because of biological factors, or when the relationship between the two is unfavorable, internalization suffers. In addition to the concept of internalization, the concept of organization is also pivotal in Lowell's thought. The different systems of our mind, Lowell said, exist at different levels or uh, at different kinds or levels of organization and integration. The id, he contended, is the mental organization we are born with. The ego is that which organizes the present. The superego is that part of us which tells us how we should be in the future. Time is the principle of arrangement, Lowell said, which structures our minds. There needs to be some pathway of communication, Lowell said, between the different parts of our personality. For this, Lowell thought the distinction between unconscious and preconscious mental processes was very important. It's only when we have one foot in our unconscious inner world, Lowell said, and the other in our pre-conscious that we are continually growing and changing and reaching higher and higher levels of mental organization. Our consciousness needs to be constantly renewed by what is in conscious in us, Lowell said. Our instinctual life, he believed, can lead us to higher levels of differentiation to developing our individuality. Psychic health for Lowell consists of fluid boundaries between the unconscious and the preconscious. When there is no communication between the unconscious and the preconscious, he said, you have pathology. Either the person cuts themselves off from their past, from their more primitive mental life, or they are totally enveloped in it. When there is an optimal degree of communication between the unconscious and the preconscious, Lowell said, Unconscious activity is led to pre-conscious organization. Our unconscious processes, our thoughts and deeds, can, or, excuse me, our conscious processes, our thoughts and deeds, can often be understood as motivated by instinctual unconscious forces. 
Our unconscious processes are often the result of personal motivation. When we understand our motivations for what was unconscious in us, we move the organization of our mental processes in the direction of consciousness. When we understand the unconscious instinctual motivation of our conscious thoughts and deeds, Lowell said, we move the organization of our mental processes in the direction of our unconscious instinctual life. Thus, what is important, Lowell contended, is balance. We must recognize and acknowledge what is unconscious in us. We must concern ourselves with our needs, our wishes, our fantasies, our conflicts, the events in our lives that were very traumatic, the things we defend ourselves against. Thus, we transform id into ego. To sever developmentally earlier from latter forms of experience and psychic organization is how Lowell defined repression. Repression, he said, maintains psychic processes and, on, uh, in, and structures on lower organizational levels. It keeps our relationships on an infantile level, Lowell said. It keeps a share of psychic processes in a less organized, more primitive state or returning them to such a state, the state of id. Lowell talked about the de-differentiating impact of the unconscious, about its unorganized power. For Lowell, the formation of psychic structure of id, of ego, of superego, leads to individuation. The beginnings of individuation are found in our relationships with our mothers. The good enough mother, Lowell said, helps to raise her child's level of organization. Individuation begins with conshire, or knowing together with her child, as the child internalizes his mother's mirroring in of him, as the mother reflects more than she presents. Disturbances in individuation are the result, Lowell said, of deficiencies in attunement of the child with his human environment. Lowell defines individuation as psychic processes or activities in which the person and other have distinct psychic organizations. He quotes Margaret Mailer, who defines identity as awareness of being, not of who I am, Mailer says, but that I am. Lowell quotes Mailer as saying, it is not a sense of who I am, but that I am. As such, this is the earliest step in the process of unfolding individuality. Lowell said the problems people present with who came to him for analysis often have to do with separateness and union and of identity. He saw these issues as some of the most basic problems of human existence. We cannot assume, he said, that people automatically develop their individuality, develop a cohesive self that is separate, yet can relate to others in a spirit of mutuality. Lowell saw such a relationship between our own individuation and our ability to see others as separate, different people. We are individuated, he said, to the extent we can see others as separate and different from us. Individuality of the human psyche was an accomplishment, Lowell said, that psychoanalysis aims to achieve. In analysis, as the original development, our environment becomes increased as in our, let me say that sentence over. In analysis, as in original development, our environment becomes increasingly internalized, Lowell said. Since the formation of psychic structure and individuation depend on our relations with others, in analysis, ego development can be set in motion again through in integration experiences with the analysts. To promote ego reorganization, the analyst must have a higher stage of organization than the client, possess objectivity, and like the good mother, Lowell said, 
the analyst must be able to maintain free-floating ego boundaries. The analyst, he said, must possess a facility for partial regression, have access to his own more archaic mentation. Before people can begin to view themselves or others in a new light, Lowell said, they often must go through a period of ego dis disorganization and regression. The patient must relive his infantile fantasies and memories, Lowell felt, with the analyst say what was unspeakable because his experience lacked language. In analysis, rather than continuing to act out his fantasies, memories, feelings, wishes, and conflicts in the course of his life, the patient learns to verbalize them. By doing so, he comes to truly know himself and to know oneself, Lowell said, makes it impossible to remain the same. By linking what's happening in the present analytic situation with his past, the patient integrates his past with the present. Meaning comes into being, and his fantasies and memories can be resurrected, reinserted in his mental life, Lowell said. By articulating our experience, Lowell said, we organize what was less organized, and both us and our environment take on a higher stage of organization. It was that richer self-organization, Lowell said, that allowed us to relate to our environment in novel ways. Thus Lowell conceived of our psyche as an emerging organization, which evolves through an active and ever more complex interchange with developed organizations of the same kind. Disorganization and higher organization, Lowell said, often go hand in hand. One had to go through a period of disorganization and regression, he said, in order to make reorganization possible. When patients achieved inner reorganization, they improved. I just want to stop here and say, are you listening, Big Pharma? Those drugs that you use to cure mental illness are really preventing the reorganization, the integration of the primitive. That has to happen for people to become well. That's just my interruption. Now I will continue with Lowell. It is in the very essence of our ego, Lowell said, to unify, to integrate. Another interruption. This is the self-organization, which is also at the core of human life, human whatever. It strives for unification and synthesis because loss of reality means annihilation of the ego, he said, and it's sinking back into undifferentiated unity that was the case before its origin. This is a, what that need for affiliation is all about. Without it, there is undifferentiation, chaos, anxiety. All right, now I will continue. To avoid primary identity, the deepest fear of the ego, Lowell said. The ego differentiates and structures reality. As the mother and infant psychologically separate, Lowell explained, an urge which he calls a libidinal flow arises, which seeks to reestablish the unity that existed between the two. Thus, the separation between mother and infant gives rise and this is the crux to understanding all these crazy people that seek unity and affiliation. So I'm going to read this again. Thus, the separation between mother and infant gives rise to a tension system between mother and infant of libidinal forces of mother toward the infant and of libidinal forces of infant toward mother. To maintain or constantly reestablish this unity in the face of growing separation from what becomes the outside world for the growing human being, by integrating and synthesizing what seems to move further and further away from it and falls into more and more unconnected parts, this is part of the activity of the ego which constitutes it as an organization in the sense of an agency that organizes, said Lowell. I'm just going to stop here. So this 
idea of the United, of the ego organizing at the bottom of it is this fear of disorganization, this primal unity, this unconscious memory. All right, let's continue. Lowell believed what we strive to reestablish. Lowell believed we strive to reestablish the lost unity with our environment at ever higher levels of organization. For him, the aim of human development was reunification. Thus, we keep reworking on a higher stage of development the same old basic issues of psychic development. Lowell said psychic events repeat themselves on different levels of development throughout life. The two basic instinctual drives that organize our environment and are organized by them, Lowell said, are the life instinct Eros and the death instinct Thanatos. Eros and Thanatos are the two basic life forces, two basic tendencies operating in our being. Eros was the tendency which promotes higher or more complex organization of psychic structure, resulting from and transforming in their turn psychic processes. Eros was responsible for human development. Thanatos, the death instinct, is the wish for tension reduction, regression, a return to the original unity. Unconsciously, we strive for separation and stimulation. Unconsciously, we strive for unity and reduction of stimulation too. Maturity, for Lowall, is becoming one's own authority while still retaining access to our archaic feelings of primordial oneness. Primitive mentations persist, Lowall said, at the deepest unconscious levels of our mental life. Earlier modes of organization coexist with latter. Thus, we both interact with others on more primitive or advanced levels. People shift considerably, Lowell said, from day to day, at different periods in their lives, in different moods and situations, from one such level to the other. Doing so can make us feel more alive, Lowell said, though not necessarily more stable. Perhaps the so-called fully developed, the mature ego, is not one that has become fixated at the presumably highest or latest stage of development, having left the others behind it, said Lowell, but it is an ego that integrates its reality in such a way that the earlier and deeper levels of ego reality integration remain alive as dynamic sources of higher organization. That sentence is profound. For Lowald, reality can be experienced and organized by the mind in different ways. Our traditional way of organizing experience, which sees the internal and the subjective as distinct and separate from the external and objective, could keep us, he said, from feeling fully alive. Do you really want to understand terrorism? Do you really want to understand gang stalking? Do you really want to understand what goes on at the most unconscious levels of human experience? Then read psychoanalysts like Hans Lowall. Those that have come after him have said things in different ways, but they keep going back to that same idea of separateness and unity. That is the basic anxiety. Isolation, I think it was Eric Fromm that said, is the basic anxiety.